Hey traders, how are you doing? Going live on Instagram, just like uh, we try to do every week. Doesn't always succeed. If you have any questions for me today, I'm here for you. I will be very happy to answer. First, let me know how's your trading day. I had a perfect trading day today. Quite an um, annoying week, I have to say. Had um, a flat three days and then great two days. Made over $10,000 today. And I had one more day with uh, over three grand. So I'm going to finish um, at around $14,000 for the week, which is a great uh, week for me and over my average. My average week would probably be something like six or seven altogether. But um, the rest of the days were rather flat. Anyway, I had a perfect day today with the help of Beyond, with the help of, I already forgot, ILMN, which is still going. Just taking uh, a look there to see what I've got left. So really a perfect trading day. If you have any questions for me, uh, I'll be very happy to answer. And I do have one question for you. So those of you who will stay with me until the end will have the chance to win a $250 uh, TradeNet, um, TradeNet voucher, which you could use to buy TradeNet services. That would be a question that I will ask you later. And the first one to answer would get, would win a $250 TradeNet voucher. So I think we already have a question here. What do you think about algorithm trading versus normal manual trading? Do they have an advantage over us? That's a good point. You know, I've been asked about uh, this issue. I was asked about this issue over and over and over again. And um, let me answer that. Algorithmic trading uh, used to think, people used to think, or actually people are thinking, that algorithmic trading is wrong for us traders. That it has something that it, it um, lowers our chance to succeed, which is totally the opposite. Which is totally the opposite. Firstly, algorithmic trading, you can make money with algorithmic trading. You can make money with algorithmic trading, but not the kind of algorithmic trading that most of you think that they, they can do. Meaning what? There are very large companies some of them I know, some of them I've been advising to, which come into the market with multiple millions of dollars of investments. These companies would build up their trading hubs as close as possible to the NASDAQ to the, to, to, uh, in, in, in Manhattan in the best locations, pay a lot of money to have the best technology, the best minds, and they need some kind of some some different kinds of systems that will help them make money. There are so many like high frequency trading and plenty of other ways to make money from algorithmic trading. Is that a game that you and I can play? Absolutely not. Why? Because it requires a huge invest investment, millions of dollars. I've seen a lot of traders who are coming into the market and saying, well, I do have a few tens of thousands of dollars or a few thousand dollars, and I'm going to build something which is uh, going to work out, and I'm going to make some money in the market. Forget about it. I haven't seen one person who makes money uh, this way. So if I can save you some time and money here, let me do that right now at this moment. Never do it. If you have a great idea and you have a backup of uh, multiple millions of dollars, not your money, somebody else's money, some money that you raised for in order to make this beautiful, whatever, uh, startup that can make money uh, from trading, uh, logarithmic trading, algo trading, uh, go for it. This could be nice. And you know what? If you raise enough money, you even get a salary even if you lose money. So the thing is, you can make money with algorithmic trading. Is it wrong for us? No. It has nothing to do with us. In fact, if you know how these systems work, and I do, if you know how these systems work, you can have an advantage because you know where the computers are going to kick in or move out. You know when the computers are going to take a, um, um, to buy or, or sell or short. And usually, if you know the way they work, since they are computers and they are designed to 
kick in at a specific time with a specific system, you have an advantage. You have the advantage. I used to have a team. There were three and then they became five people who were doing the exact opposite of what the algorithmic traders would do. So we used to analyze what they would do, do the opposite. I mean, once they moved in, we waited for them to the point where they would sell, for example, and then actually not do the opposite, but take advantage of what the logarithmic algo trading uh, systems used to do. We used to have a close to 100% success rate doing that. And I was, and, and we were doing that for maybe, well, I was doing, I was a part of the system for more than a year. I wasn't trading it myself. I was kind of consulting them really. And uh, after a year and a half or anything like that, uh, these guys who were working with me, they just realized they could do a lot of money by themselves. They didn't need me anymore. And they just, that's okay, that's fine. But at that point, uh, they kept doing money because of algo trading. So my best advice for you, don't get involved in it. Your chance in making money in algo trading is very, very low. Unless you have multiple millions of dollars and then you can come up with something, possibly something beautiful. Other than that, don't get involved. I hope I saved you some money and some time. I know right now there's plenty of you guys saying, I'm wrong. You're thinking I'm wrong. You're thinking, well, we could possibly do that. We have a system. We have a way. We can program our computer to do this and that. Well, I'll meet you in a year. And let's say and let's see what you come what you came out with. Well, I promise you, it's going to end up in tears. How do you overcome your fear of losing your profits, Michael? <laughs> I, I, uh, the best system to do that, Michael, is uh, by designating a certain amount of money that you no longer care of. What do I mean by that? Firstly. You never trade with scared money. You don't trade with money that you can lose. And if you will lose, which you are likely to, uh, will change your life. You can't go on vacation. You can't change your car. You can't fix your car. You can't buy a new refrigerator if it goes wrong. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't do this stuff. So the, the best way to overcome your fear of losing money is to designate a certain amount of money, let's say $10,000, which I think is reasonable, designate a certain amount of money and say to yourself, this money is gone. If you're married, go to your wife and say, darling, this money is gone. We no longer have that. Do you agree? I mean, are we on the same page? Are we okay with this? This money is gone. We're not going to see it anymore. It's finished. If you do really in your mind, deep down in your mind, if you do really believe that this money is gone and you probably have no access to it anymore, you're eligible to trade. I'm saying you're only eligible to trade if you're not afraid of losing your money and that the only way to, lose your, to, to, to come to terms with that is to really understand that you are now playing with money, that you're not scared to lose and already come to terms that you're not going to see that money anymore. Funny enough, this is the only way to make money. I'm not saying you're going to lose this money. I'm just saying that if you really come to that point where you understand and accept and your wife, for example, or your husband, accept the fact that that money is gone, then, it really only then gives you a chance to make money. Let's see if you guys have more questions. And don't, don't forget, I do have my last question today for you guys. And you can win a $250 voucher from TradeNet by answering the right answer. And that will come in a few minutes. So let's see the qu next question. How do I trade in the summer? You know, summertime is quite tricky because summertime, and I, I have the feeling like summertime already arrived this week. You know, I had, 
I started my week with a losing day. I lost $400 and well, that was all over the place. My market came a bit up, a bit down, didn't take any direction. And then that was Monday. And then Tuesday, I made a profit of $600. Altogether, a profit of $200, which I probably paid for commission. So I started my day with my week with typical summer week, which, where the market didn't move much. And then came Tuesday where I made almost four grand or something like that, I'm not sure. And then another typical f uh, uh, summer day, which came in yesterday, I finished up like $600, I believe, something like that. And then today, market was not moving, but I had ILMN and I had Beyond, and that was, and these were two amazing trades. So really, the whole week, including today, market did not make a move. I'll take a look now. Well, we finally did came, did come under the loss, slightly, nothing. So on summertime, take a holiday. I do that quite a lot. Like next week, I'm going to be a few days on a holiday. Um, August, go out with family. Uh, really, that's the time to take your holiday. <laughs> and uh, that, that's a good advice, I think, for traders. Plus, um, lower your size. Just lower your size. Uh, we, we keep training. I mean, sometimes we have great summers. But it's more likely to have flat looking day like we have today. Today it's also uh, a Friday, so you know it's another reason for why the market's not moving that much. Usually, typical Friday really. Uh, I don't care much trade, trade beyond, I don't care much about dividend stocks. I, I, you know, if you invest money in the market, which I don't, I don't believe in investing. I'm very much afraid of investing. Really, I am afraid of investing money in stocks. I trade them. I only trade them. But if you do believe in investing money, I can't help you with um, with a good idea about dividend stocks. You know, I learned that from, from other people, not from my experience. I don't invest. But there's so many people who buy dividend stocks and then those dividend stocks um, stop paying dividends or stuff like that. Or sometimes, you know, you, you think you've got a great dividend stock and then um, even if it continues to pay you something, price comes down and so on. I, I wouldn't trust that. I just wouldn't trust dividend stocks or anything. Are we going to have another sale soon? Uh, <laughs> well, swipe up this uh, video and see for yourself. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we try to get a sale every, every month or so. So, yeah, I guess the next one will be coming. I, we don't have a plan right now, uh, but uh, definitely will be coming. Uh, what is the advantage of trading CFDs? You know, I've been trading uh, for the past 20 years. For my first... 12, I was trading equities, and then I started trading CFDs. So I've been trading CFDs quite a long time. Wow, almost eight years now, I think. I'm not sure. Seven years. Seven years or so, I've been trading CFDs. Huge advantage. You know, if you live in the States, you're not aware of the advantage of CFDs usually, because in the US, people don't trade CFDs. You do trade other contracts. Uh, CFD is a contract for difference. That's the idea of these CFDs. Okay, so a few words about CFDs. These are contracts for difference. Just like options are contracts, just like futures are contracts. So there's also CFDs, which you can trade instead of trading stocks. Just like you could go long Apple by buying a call option or short Apple by buying a put option, uh, you could trade CFDs. And all around the world, people trade CFDs. They don't trade equities. Usually, they don't trade equities. So there's a huge advantage in CFDs because they're more liquid. Um, I'm clicking the button. Look at my videos. I'm clicking the button. I'm in with thousands of shares with almost no spread. I'm clicking the button and I'm out. I'm not in the head of the market makers, of Wall Street market makers. So this execution is just amazing. And the quantities I want to trade, I'm not limited to quantities. I can short every stock that I like. I can short an IPO. I could do almost everything I like. No uptick calls. Um, should I continue? I mean, uh, just a slippage issue. I save a lot of money on slippage. I save a lot of money on fast execution. I save a lot of money on being able to short everything I like. 
I make a lot of money by doing so. So huge advantage of CFDs. Uh, you can, you can trade CFDs even if you are in the States, you can trade CFDs as long as it's not your own account. That's our funded account program. So again, swipe up later and join us for the funded account program. You can trade the CFD account. It's not your account. You will be trading a funded account by an investment firm. You can share the profits. You can get up to 85% of the profits, but it's not going to be your own account. That's a way to trade CFDs, even if you are in the States. So there's a huge advantage. Now, I don't have to do that. I, could, I have my own Colmex account, which is, a, which is a brokerage firm based in Cyprus. Uh, and I could, I could have my own CFD account because I do not live in the States. But if you do, you can join our funded account program. What is to average down? To average down is to add to a losing trade. Um, adding to a losing trade uh, is, is something that um, I, I very strongly suggest you never do. So if you, let's say you're going long, you buy a stock at $20, um, but it comes down, comes down to 1950. You should be moving out. No, you're actually averaging down, meaning you're adding to a losing trade. So let's say you bought 1,000 shares at 20. Now you're buying 1,000 shares at 1950. So your average price now becomes 1975. So if the stock goes up just by 25 cents, you're out without a loss or even goes up, then you probably have a winner. That, calls, that is called averaging down. And then people keep on doing that. So let's say the same stock now came down to 19. I uh, saw to, uh, what was it? Started, yeah, 19 was $20, 1950, and now 19. So the same person would average down again, meaning adding to a losing trade. That's a great system to recover losing trades. However, and it will succeed more than it fails, more than 50% of the time. But the problem is sometimes when the stock is just not getting back to where it was, you have a huge loser. So you will be making money more than you will be losing money. But once you have one big losing trade, you're out of the game. You are just going to have the worst ever losing day and the rest of the small winning, winning days that you could have had by averaging down would disappear in no time, meaning you're going to wipe up your account, you're not going to survive this. Absolutely never ever average down on a losing trade. Just don't do that. You know, we say in trading, uh, I hear a lot of people saying, it will always come back. I went long this stock, it looks great, great uh, opportunities, great company, great management, great quarterly reports, so what? It came down by one dollar. It will always come back. Tell you what, the only one who really comes back are, as we say in trading, our parents to uh, kids who got lost in the mall. So these are the only ones who are really returning. The parents will return. The stock may not return. It's a trader's job. So the thing is, never trust a stock to come back. Never. And it may several times, but the one that doesn't, that's the one that's going to wipe up your account. Don't do that. <laughs> um, do I follow Oliver Velez? I, I, I like Oliver Velez. I mean, he was one of the people that I started with. I read his book when I started out as a trader many, many, many years ago, 20 years ago. I appreciate the guy. I think he's a good trader. Uh, but I do have my own trading room, you know, so I don't follow Oliver Velez daily. Uh, but uh, every once in a while, yeah, why not? Since some of his uh, um, lessons in um, in uh, Vegas, every once in a while, and um, I think it's great. I think he's doing good. Appreciate what he's doing, and uh, I think he had some great services. I mean, he's a competitor to trade it, but uh, certainly have some great services. What is the risk percentage with each trade? You plan to buy our expert package soon. Okay. I can't really tell what is, um, I think the expert package comes with uh, a $9,000 drawdown 
you can't lose more than nine thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, either eight or nine thousand. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I'm not into it that much. But let me tell you this: you shouldn't be losing more than one or maximum two percent of of the uh, of the amount that you are willing to lose. So let's say let's make it simple. Let's say you can lose ten thousand dollars, as I mentioned earlier. Tell your wife first. So let's say you can lose ten thousand dollars. You should never lose more than 1%, which is $100 per trade. That's the game you should be playing. So if it's $8,000, just make the calculation yourself, $80. Up to 2%. Why up to? Usually you should never lose more than 1% of, uh, of your account size or of how much money you are willing to lose, really. That would be the, the answer. So um, don't lose more than 1%. However, sometimes... So calculate your trade, your quantity, according to this 1%. But sometimes you've got a trade which is just looking magnificent. Uh, not all trades are created equally. And therefore, uh, you should be looking for trades. Uh, sometimes when you do have this opportunity to trade a magnificently look, good-looking trade, then you should certainly uh, take a bigger risk up to 2%. In rare occasions, you should go to up to 2% risk. Okay, last question before we move to where I ask you a question. And you could win a $250 uh, TradeNet uh, voucher. So I'll be asking you this question pretty soon now. I'll just answer one more question here. Welcome. I'm very glad that you like this. What is the best way to overcome your fear by losing your profits on a trade? Um, I mean, often close my position, you close your position uh, before you give it a chance of a breakout. Uh, well, <laughs> it comes uh, nicely with your first question, Michael. So I'll be uh, answering uh, two questions by Michael this time today. Um, okay, so let me tell you this. You know, when I'm trading, when I have a winning trade, uh, my way to cope with, um, to hang on to a winner is to take a quick partial. What do I mean by that? You know, I, I take a trade. doesn't matter what my size is, but my size is rather larger than the average size of usually traders use. Quite experienced, so I do that. So my emotions are running wild too. Meaning what? I'm taking a trade. I bought a stock. It's moving up. Now I have two demons on my shoulder. Like the one on the right hand shoulder would scream in my right ear and say, you remember the last time you were making like uh, 30 cents on a $20 stock and you were hoping to make uh, a lot of money, but you sold it at 30 cent profit and you could actually make $1. So... I'm thinking about selling and this demon saying, you remember the last time? I mean, hang on, don't sell. And the other demon saying, yeah, but you, do you remember the last time you were making 30 cents and then you hang out a little bit too long and then it came down and you finished with a losing trade. So you see, I'm fighting in between this demon's advice. And the way to cope with this is very simple. Sell, I mean, take a partial. Let's say you have 400 shares, sell 300. That's what I do. You can do it with 200 sell 200 to sell 300 and so you are actually saying to the demon on your right hand shoulder you're saying okay i just sold 200 shares keep riding you're promising me one dollar let's continue this trade until we get one dollar profit and to the other one you're saying you think it's going to come down here's your 20 or 30 cents now shut up let me go so in your deep down in your mind you are feeling a little bit more confident after you are taking a partial taking a partial may not be the right decision to make i mean i'm keeping some size why would i keep a size in a company that in, in a share that i'm not sure is going to continue higher that's what i'm doing after taking a partial right no it clears my mind it lets me keep my profitable trades and run further. That's what's great about taking partial, and that's how you copy it. And now we come to the part where I ask you a question. So I'm sorry I didn't answer all of your questions, traders. I do try to answer as much as I can, 
uh, but we do have a limited time here because I don't want you to get uh, too annoyed or too tired or whatever, and we are getting to the weekend now. So uh, let me ask you a quick question now, and, um, and let's see who's the winner of this $250 trade net voucher. So are you ready? Here comes the question. Let me just scroll down to the bottom so I can see your questions. Here we go. My question is my question is about IPOs. You guys know we love to trade IPOs in our trading room. You're very welcome to join by swiping up and joining us for a free 14-day try. Um, or go to our YouTube channel, which is free. So, uh, trading IPOs is great as long as you trade it with some certain rules. Which are the three main rules of trading an IPO? When would I go? Just a quick answer here. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things I want to tell you, we only go long IPOs. I mean, very rare that I would go short, although I could do that with a CFD account. Let's say I see an IPO, which is a good potential long, and I'm asking you which are the three rules uh, which I should respect, which I, I should accept, uh, before I click the button and go long and IPO those three rules. First one to answer, get a $250 voucher. I see already one answer here. Let me read that. Not the full answer, sorry. <laughs> right. Um, I would call it 95% uh, uh, med stock trading, but you got it right. Okay, I, I see you know the answer, so you're fine. I'm fine with this. I, I, I understand that you got the answer right. So we've got the winner right here, traders. We've got the winner that was pretty quick, I have to say. Uh, med stock trading, please contact uh, uh, Trader Support. Uh, you'll get uh, an email below, so you can send an email and um, get your $250 voucher. And the answer is, just like med stock trading has said, uh, high over the first five minute candle. Yeah, we need to go long over the first five minute candle. So if we stock starts moving up and then we, ha we, we have the the first five minute candle, we would watch that in one minute candles because we want to make sure that it's coming down a little bit before reaching a new high. So it starts, let's say, by moving up and then comes down a bit, pull back. Technically speaking, that's always what we look for. And then goes over the first five minute candle. We would watch that in one minute candles. And that would be the first rule. The second rule would be over one million shares in volume before it breaks out over this five minute candle. And the third rule would be over the IPO price, meaning when a stock goes on, when there's a new IPO, the price should be over, the, the traded price should be over the IPO price, meaning if the people who participated in the IPO, that's not us, that are the people who bought it at the IPO price, we are only buying it at the market's IPO price. So if the market IPO price is over the IPO price, usually we like to see more than 5%, but over the IPO price, meaning it's green because some companies are starting to trade 20 cents, 20% 20 below. So we need to see that over the IPO price, the more the better, over the first five minute candle and with more than one million shares. So you've got the answer right. Thank you very much for participating. Traders, uh, don't remember to swipe up this, um, uh, this video for some um, great deals that we have for you right now. And if you're seeing this video on YouTube, uh, there will be some links below. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Um, hope you did well today. And I'll see you next week. Bye, traders. Have fun.